I'm here at Tate Modern in London and as you can see there's loads of solar PV working away in the background. But as with all solar PV, indeed all renewables, you kind of have to live in the moment. Who knows whether it's going to pour down with rain or be beautifully sunny or really overcast and cloudy, especially here in the UK. Enter energy storage, which is actually a surprisingly sexy topic. You have companies like Tesla making energy storage systems look like artwork hanging on the wall. Smooth lines, beautifully sleek, shiny white. And we're all so enthusiastic to see renewable energy really working. How fantastic to finally bring some relief to the grid and generate and store our own energy. This is what makes the benefits of energy storage so exciting. The opportunities it opens up for renewable energy technology to be genuinely practical. Finally, we can store the energy that renewable technology produces and access it on demand, regardless of the time of day, or the time of year, or the weather. But as with all new technology, there are no guidelines around energy storage. When a huge battery hanging on your garage wall goes wrong, it could go badly wrong. How do we ensure that energy storage systems are safe to use? How can we feel reassured that the systems we might design into homes, offices and warehouses will not endanger lives? Fortunately, we don't live in a wait-and-see world. We have standard setters that the IET bring together, industry leaders that analyse every single risk related to new technology. They make sure there are guidelines in place that provide a framework for operation, design, installation and use. As in any industry, certain manufacturers are taking the lead, fast becoming household names. For energy storage, it's undoubtedly Sonnen and Tesla. Well, I've been involved with renewables for more than 20 years now, and I've been involved with contributing to standards for much of that time. And I think standards and codes of practice such as this are a vital part in developing an industry, making sure it is easy and effective in, in its deployment. Yeah, I agree. Sonnen has been active in the market for since 2010 and has got over 20,000 systems installed in the different markets where we operate. And you can really see this huge potential for the UK market. And we have a vision of, of clean and affordable energy for everyone. Uh, and you can see in, in the UK that as the market prices come down for batteries and electricity prices go up, that this, this can really be available to everyone out there. I mean, Tesla's mission is about accelerating the world's transition to renewable energy, and I think documents like this play a vital part in, in, in accelerating that transition, and that's why we've been delighted to share our experience and our expertise in developing it. Energy storage could have far-reaching implications. How will homeowners react, and what are societal expectations? The Renewable Energy Association represents renewable energy producers and promotes the use of all forms of renewable energy in the UK. In the future we're going to have huge amounts of energy storage in the UK. It's going to happen at all scales in people's homes but also connected to the grid directly. And what we're keen to make sure is that this is done in the right way and consumers are protected. There's exciting opportunities, for example, plugging in electric vehicles to your battery, linking that up with your solar panels, coming back at the end of the day, maybe selling that power from your car back to the grid directly. So it's really exciting, innovative uses. So for us, as well as having great technical expertise, we need to have great legal expertise and make sure that consumers are protected along every stage of that journey. One of the key ways we thought we could add value to this project was by making sure that all of the key regulatory and legal requirements associated with storage are dealt with properly. For example, planning permission, building regulations, health and safety issues all need to be thought about up front. We've been working closely with the steering committee to make sure that all of that is factored in and clearly set out in the code of practice for everyone to see. But at the end of the day, this is consumer-led. Any working group would be useless without the presence of the consumer. Alan Burns. For me, the issue is we have a load of massive generators still firing massive amounts of energy into the grid that everyone takes for granted. What we really want is for the end users, the people in the homes and the workplaces, to feel like they can put a bit of energy storage in their house, their home, their workplace, and that it's actually going to be able to contribute to the bigger quick picture. In that way, we can have an energy grid where the small guys are getting involved, investing in the grid, and eventually you would hope that we'll be able to shut down some of those massive, giant, infinite power generators. 
And that sums up the crucial work here, safeguarding technology. It's great to have bold, sexy, intuitive, good-looking technology that is capable of changing the world. But you also have to have trust. Technology that isn't thought through from a technical aspect, or that malfunctions or worse still blows up someone's kitchen, or technology that's difficult to use, or overly technical in design, prevents people, people like you and me, from adopting it in the first place. Technology isn't going to save the world if no one uses it.